Hello and welcome. In today's lecture, we shall take a look at the aquatic ecosystem. There are many types of aquatic ecosystems ranging from small temporary puddles to large ocean. They differ widely with regard to abiotic factors and living organisms. Global aquatic ecosystems can be classified broadly based on the salinity as freshwater ecosystem, marine ecosystem and estuary. First, let us take a look at the freshwater ecosystem. Freshwater ecosystem has relatively less salinity than marine water ecosystem. Freshwater ecosystem is categorized as lentic or standing water ecosystem and lotic or running water ecosystem. Lakes, ponds, bogs, swamps, marshes and puddles are examples of lentic or standing water ecosystems. Rivers and streams are the best examples of lotic or running water ecosystems. Among the lentic or standing water ecosystem, lakes and ponds are good examples of a self-regulating lentic or standing water ecosystem. Location, size, depth and substratum of a pond or lake constitute the biology of the ecosystem. Abiotic components of the pond lake ecosystem are temperature, light, water and several inorganic and organic chemical substances. Biotic components are producers, consumers and decomposers. The producers also known as autotrophs are of two kinds. Some are tiny and known as micro vegetation and some are large and known as macro vegetation. Micro vegetation is called phytoplankton or micro algae. They are tiny and contain chlorophyll and require sunlight in order to make food by photosynthesis. Most phytoplankton is buoyant and float on the surface where sunlight penetrates the water. Phytoplankton also require inorganic nutrients such as nitrates, phosphates and sulphur which they convert into proteins, fats and carbohydrates. In a balanced ecosystem, phytoplankton provides food for a large number of consumers. Sometimes when surplus nutrients enter the pond or lake, phytoplanktons grow out of control and form what is known as algal blooms which is harmful. These blooms can produce extremely toxic compounds that have harmful effects on fishes and other creatures in the pond or lake. Macro vegetations are plants that are large enough to be seen by the naked eye. Macro vegetations are extremely important to the health of the pond or lake ecosystem. They provide a direct source of food for fishes and other organisms and also provide hiding place for small organisms. They also provide substratum for some creatures to lay eggs. They are classified as emergent vegetation, submerged vegetation and floating vegetations as well as free floating vegetation. Emergent vegetations are plants that have a large portion of their stem, branches and leaves out of water. Submerged vegetations have most of their structures below water. Floating vegetations are plants 
that have the leaves floating on the surface of the water like the lotus. Free floating vegetations may be rooted, non rooted plants that float and move easily by wave action and will continue growing in a floating mass or get entangled with other plants. Consumers are heterotrophs which directly or indirectly feed on the producers. Consumers are of two types, they are micro consumers and macro consumers. Micro consumers are minute animals that float on the surface of the pond or lake. They are called zooplankton found along with phytoplankton upon which they feed and therefore, they are called primary consumers. Macro consumers are relatively large animals like mosquito larvae, water bugs, beetles, water scorpion, crabs, fishes like catla, labio, catfishes, water snakes, frogs etcetera. Among these macro consumers some like water bugs, beetles and small fishes feed on primary consumers. Hence, they are referred as secondary consumers or primary carnivores. Macro consumers like large fishes, frogs, turtles etcetera that feed on secondary consumers. Hence, they are known as tertiary consumers or secondary carnivores. Water snakes feed on frogs hence known as tertiary carnivores. Snakes and fishes are eaten by birds hence they are known as apex predators. Thus, there is flow of energy from producers to consumers in the pond or a lake ecosystem. When producers and consumers die, their dead bodies are decomposed by decomposers like bacteria and fungi. During decomposition, they release simple inorganic substances into the ecosystem which is again available for the producers. Thus, decomposers complete the life cycle in the pond ecosystem. The lotic or running water ecosystem is represented by rivers and streams. They are well oxygenated as they have a large surface area to absorb oxygen. Minerals are lesser and light penetration is more. In lower reaches, water is generally muddy cutting down light penetration. The producers of the biotic components are phytoplanktons, attached algae, water grasses and amphibious plants. Consumers are represented by flatworms, leeches, water insects, snails, fishes and other large aquatic animals. As usual, decomposers are represented by bacteria and fungi. Now, let us take a look at the marine ecosystem. Marine ecosystem is also known as ocean ecosystem. High salt content and mineral ions and global circulation make marine ecosystems different from other aquatic ecosystems. Other physical factors that determine the distribution of marine ecosystems are geology, temperature, tides, light availability and geography. It is a large highly stable and self sustaining and self regulating ecosystem. They cover two third of the earth's surface. Different areas of the ocean can be classified 
as different types of marine ecosystems. Thus, marine ecosystems include the abyssal plain which is areas like deep sea coral, whale falls and brine pools. Polar regions such as the Arctic and the Antarctic. Coral reefs is another kind of marine ecosystem. The deep sea such as the community found in the abyssal water column, hydrothermal vents, kelp forests, mangroves, the open ocean, rocky shores, salt marshes and mud flats as well as sandy shores are also considered as marine ecosystems. Marine ecosystems have distinct organisms and characteristics that results from the unique combination of physical factors that create them. The abiotic components of the marine ecosystems are physiochemical factors like dissolved oxygen, light, temperature, mineral ions and waves of different kinds and tides. Marine ecosystems show distinct horizontal and vertical zones based on sunlight penetration. The biotic components are the producers, consumers and the decomposers. Producers are phytoplanktons like diatoms, dinoflagellates etc and large marine plants like seaweeds and angiosperms. Consumers are heterotrophs differentiated along the food chain as primary, secondary and tertiary consumers. Primary consumers feed directly on producers which include invertebrate animals like crustaceans and molluscans and vertebrates like fishes. Secondary consumers feed on the primary consumers. They are fishes like herrings, mackerels and much more. Tertiary consumers are large fishes like cod, haddock and many more that feeds on primary and secondary consumers. Decomposers are chiefly bacteria and fungi which participate actively in decomposing dead bodies of both the producers and the consumers to clean up the ocean. Some marine ecosystems are very productive. Some examples are near shore regions salt marshes and mangrove forests which teem with life. Others like the abyssal plain at the bottom of the ocean contain pockets of life that are spread far apart from one another. Some marine ecosystems like the deep sea are in constant darkness where photosynthesis cannot occur. Other marine ecosystems like rocky shores go through extreme changes in temperature, light availability, oxygen levels and other factors on a daily basis. Thus, the organisms that inhabit various marine ecosystems are as diverse as the ecosystem themselves. They must be highly adapted to the physical conditions of the ecosystem in which they live. For example, organisms that live in the deep sea have adapted to the darkness by creating their own light source with cells called photophores on their bodies that light up to attract prey or potential mates. Many parts of the ocean remain unexplored and 
much still remains to be learnt about marine ecosystems. Now, let us take a quick look at the estuary. An estuary is a semi closed coastal water body where the fresh water from land drainage mixes with the sea. River mouths, coastal bays, tidal marshes, and bodies of water behind barrier beaches are some example of estuarine ecosystems. Estuaries are generally productive since water flow subsides and nutrients are abundant. Chief producers of the estuarine ecosystem are marsh grasses, sea weeds, sea grasses, benthic algae and phytoplanktons. Consumers are oysters, crabs, several types of shrimps and fishes. As usual, decomposers are represented by bacteria and fungi. With this, I hope you have a clear understanding of the definition, types and the different components of the ecosystem and how they interact for the flow of energy and sustenance. Wishing you all the best. Goodbye.